amazing testimonies one after another, things that we hardly hear of. We hear this person is sick of that, this person is sick of this, this person succumbed to this, succumbed to that, and here we are, sickness after sickness without exception, are being healed left and right. That's amazing, it's encouraging. We think maybe the healing is for that person because that person super special, super faithful, super something. <laughs> And me, unfortunately, I'm not super in any way. So I'm just going to hear about these things and wish maybe somehow one day it'd be, it'd be for me. Again, looking at the work that Jesus did, he healed all. The Bible is very clear. He healed all that were oppressed. Uh, again, the 10 lepers went to him, all 10, not five, not six, all 10. And the sad thing is only one came back to thank him. And he was so astonished. Where are the other nine here? But all other nine were so healed. God understands that it's hard for us as human beings to receive this free healing from him. He understands that we look with our eyes and see the medical reports, see the symptom or that symptom, be overwhelmed by it. He understands. And that's why the Bible is full of confirmation and reconfirmations that God is really serious about wanting us to be well. I'd like you to just take a walk with me through this Old Testament scripture here in Deuteronomy 28. Uh, it's really helpful because in this chapter, it speaks about many, many types of sicknesses that we're, we find very common. Let's see what God has to say about them. So firstly, Deuteronomy 28 is broken into two parts. The first part is about blessings. If you are diligent and carefully obey all of God's commandments, then these blessings will follow you. You're blessed in the city, you're blessed in the country, you're blessed when you go in, you're blessed when you go out. Basically, wherever you go, you go you're blessed. It talks about how your children are blessed. The work, whatever you put your hands to, they are successful. But if you go down a little further in Deuteronomy 28, you come into this section which says, but if you do not carefully listen to God and obey all of his commandments, not some, not 99%, but all of his commandments, then these curses will pursue you. They'll follow you. They'll come after you. And let's look at what these curses are. There's a long list of them. I'll just highlight the ones that tie to what Dr. Susan has been sharing with. First of all, of course, cursed are you in the city and cursed are you in the country. Cursed when you go in, cursed when you go out. You can't run away from this curse. It's not location. It will come after you. And it talks about these types of diseases. It talks about fever. Who's been sick? Who's got fever? That's part of the curse. It talks about inflammations. Who hasn't had inflammations of some kind? Uh, whether you bang yourself and, and get swelling or some internal sickness manifests in, in inflammation of glands or whatever. And then it talks about skin diseases from head to the soles of the feet. It talks about mental disorders, mental health problems. It talks about knee and leg issues, arthritis, I suppose, twisted ankles or knee joints. And then it talks about tumors. I like tumors, the word, because tumors manifest itself everywhere. And when people hear the word tumors, they go, oh no, the world's gonna end. But it's here in Deuteronomy 28 as one of the curses. It even says that not just all of these, these sicknesses that are listed, but every sickness that's not even listed is also included in this list of curses in Deuteronomy 28. Why is this good news for us? This sounds like bad news, but actually it's really good news because yes, we cannot obey all of God's commandments. We cannot fulfill all the requirements, every single of the laws perfectly. It's okay because we have this amazing verse in the New Testament in Galatians 3.13. It says, Christ Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law because cursed is anyone who hangs on a tree or cross or pole. That's Jesus. He went to the cross. Why? Yes, to deal with all of our iniquities, our sins, our disobedience. But he also went to the cross to redeem us from this curse. This word redemption in Greek, uh, exagorazo, conveys this idea of payment. He purchased us out of this bondage to this curse. He took us and redeemed us, ransomed us, by his own payment, by his own sacrifice of himself to cancel this curse. And now that we know from Deuteronomy 28 what this curse is, which is fever, inflammations, mental health, tumors, we know that that's been canceled, redeemed, reversed by Jesus. That's really good news. So when we hear a bad report, we can turn to Galatians 3.13 and say, wait a minute, this can't come here. Jesus paid for it. That's why Dr. Susan's testimonies and sharings of all these healings are real because they are just a manifestation of the goodness of God and the finished work of Jesus. I want to highlight a bit more here because in Deuteronomy 28, we talked about the blessings and curses, but we go to Deuteronomy 27. God gives us this instruction for the 12 tribes of Israel to separate themselves between the two mountains. The mountains are Gerizim and Mount Ebal. Six tribes went on Gerizim and six tribes went on Ebal. Six tribes from Gerizim pronounced the blessings of the law, and six tribes went on Ebal to pronounce the cursings of the law. Basic things which I shared earlier in Deuteronomy 28 were repeated, announced here on these two mountains. And I'll show you a picture of these two mountains. It's in Israel. It looks like this. So on your left, um, 
uh, is Gerizim, and on your right, that side, is Ibal. Uh, they kind of look like uh, shoulders, if you ask me. <laughs> Here we go, I'm just put it really close. And they kind of look like two shoulders. What's really interesting is, in between these two mountains, Gerizim and Ibal, is a city called Shechem, right in between. And Hebrew, Shechem means the back, below the neck, between the shoulders. What's the meaning of this? Well, it's very interesting because in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, it says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be on his shoulders in English, but in Hebrew, Shechem. The government or his reign or his rule shall be on his back in between the two shoulders, between Gerizim and Ebal. What is it talking about? In Gerizim and on Ebal, only one of those mountains had an altar built on them. It was built on Ebal, not Gerizim. Because we have redemption, payment by the work of Jesus on the cross for the curse of the law. So we have redemption. That's why Galatians 3.13 Makes sense. Christ redeemed us from the curse. So tumors, fever, inflammation, mental health, skin problems, whatever it may be, are part of this cancellation, a redemption by Jesus. When Jesus took the cross on his back and went up to Golgotha, where he was hung, he was fulfilling two things. One, he was fulfilling the redemption, the altar on Ebal, to redeem us from the curse. But at the same time, the Bible says, Jesus said, I came to fulfill the law. What does that mean? I came to fulfill, complete, finish. So Jesus met all the requirements of the law completely, perfectly. So Jesus, as our representative, qualifies for all the blessings of the law. Everything's announced on Gerizim, all the blessings, blessing you in the city, Bless you in the country, bless when you go in, bless when you go out. That's all part of the fulfillment of the law. That's why there's no altar on Erezim, because we qualify because our representative Jesus qualified us. At the same time, all the curses that should come to us, we have been redeemed from because Jesus took those curses on himself by being himself a curse. The Bible says, curse is anyone who hangs on a tree. He became the curse. So we have this picture that God really wants us to see that tells us that, look, I want you blessed. I don't want you cursed. But you cannot do it by yourself. You cannot meet all the requirements of the law to be blessed. And you cannot avoid all the bad commandments or evil commandments, wrongdoings of the law to avoid the curse. You cannot. But someone can. Someone who carried the cross on his Shechem, on his back, in between Gerizim and Nabal, and fulfilled everything for us. This is God's design. And this is the reason why these testimonies and these sharings by Dr. Susan, we can be entitled to, we can be qualified for, because it has nothing to do with us. God's not looking at our conduct and, oh, you deserve this thing. You know, he's looking at the work of his son, Jesus, on the cross when he carried the cross on his back. And he's looking and saying, do you want to receive what has been paid for? You've been ransomed. Do you want it? And the answer is yes, we want it. So that's why this ministry that Dr. Susan has is the most amazing thing that I've, been, I've seen because it's a manifestation of what God has prepared and purchased for us and has given to us so freely. I'll end here now. Thank you so much for uh, just walking with me through the Word of God. It is the final word demands on us. Thank you.